how to do chroma key on a terrible green screen on Premiere Pro. So here I have an example footage of a terrible green screen setup. Uh, it has a lot of visible highlights and shadows, lots of wrinkles and imperfections which make it a nightmare to do a chroma key. But it's still something that we can uh, have a quite decent result with and I'm going to show you how. We're going to go into the effects panel, search for ultra key and apply that to the footage. Now, first of all, you want to go into the key caller and select an area of the green screen. You are going to get terrible results, of course, no matter the area you choose to select, the brighter or the darker, it just doesn't work. You can try change the settings to aggressive. It makes it a tiny little bit better, but still not usable. So I'm going to set this to the default. And now I'm going to start teaching you some tricks uh, of how to make it work. So we're going to select our key color and we want to avoid the highlights and actually select something like the darker areas of the footage. And that is because it's easier to get rid of the highlights by adjusting the settings here in the matte generation than it is to remove the shadows. I'm going to show you an example of this now. Going to select the highlights of the green screen here and then I go into the shadow slider option here and put it all the way to zero to remove the green screen. But if I move my video layer up and bring in the background here to the bottom layer just so that we kind of see what's going on. If I play this video, you're going to notice a lot of problems in the dark areas of my subject. Uh, so we start to remove areas that we don't want to. So let me reset the shadows here and we're going to go and select a darker tone of the green. And then we're going to close the shadow slider, open the highlight one and we can lower that to zero. And in some cases, it's going to do the trick for you. Uh, but we also have other adjustments we can do here. And I always suggest you use the pedestal one. You can slide this up until you remove every last bit of your green screen. And then it's already very, very usable. Those are the main tricks. But you also have more things here in the matte cleanup, which are the soften option, which will just smooth the edges of your footage but you want to be careful because it also starts to eat into the chroma key so it starts to shrink the edges as well and then you also have the choke effect which does exactly that it shrinks the edges and that's basically it for removing the green from your green screen and now I'm going to give you a few tips about how to make the background and your footage match in colors and focus. So first of all, we want to blur the background a bit because we want only our subject in focus. So I'm going to search for Gaussian blur effect and apply that to the background. And we can just slide up a bit until we unfocus our background. Like if this was a real camera focusing on the person and you don't want to do too much and not too little. You want to try to mimic a real camera focus or so something like this. Then I want to start to match the brightness and contrast of both of these. And my footage has some very overexposed areas, very bright. And the footage on the background looks very soft. So first I'm going to import a lumetri effect from the color corrections to the background and try to make it a bit brighter by raising the highlights and maybe a bit of the exposure as well. You mainly want to color correct the footage and not the background, but in this case, we're going to have to do both so that we get a better result. Uh, I'm going to apply Lumetri to my footage as well and now try to fix these overexposed brightness. Uh, I'm going to close the Ultra key here and open the Lumetri and the basic correction 
and we're gonna try to lower the highlights. Now this doesn't work very well, it makes weird things happen to the skin. So we don't want to use a lot of this, just a tiny bit like this. And then to reduce these blown out areas, I'm going to go into the whites and start to slide this down. I can also reduce a bit of the saturation of my footage. And it's starting to look more natural. Now I'm going to do one of my favorite tricks here, uh, which is to blend the colors from the background and the subject. I'm going to create a new item here on the project, an adjustment layer. And we are going to press OK and drag this on top of everything, the footage and the background. And we can stretch it to the length we want to. So I'm going to apply an effect here, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to go, first of all, into the opacity and disable the animation here. And just change the opacity to something like 15, for example, 15 to 20. And then we can click on repeat edges here and start to slide up the blurriness. And it's going to create this sort of glow effect, which leaks the colors from the background on top of my subject here. And we don't want to overdo this so that it doesn't look like it's a sort of dream effect. Just want to keep it down like this, for example. Maybe reduce a bit of the opacity so that it creates a bit of a soft edge. And then we can actually start to duplicate by pressing Alt, clicking and dragging this layer up. And in this second copy, I can go and raise the blurriness way, way more. Like this is good. And that will make lots of the colors from the background leak into my footage. I don't want to overdo this, but here's an before and after effect. It might look like you lose a bit of contrast, but what we can do is go into the project, create another adjustment layer, put on top of all of this, and then apply a Lumetri color correction to give back some contrast and to color grade everything together to fit if you want to save some work, you can go into the creative area here and choose a lot from the list and then adjust the intensity so that it's not too dark. And then it's basically doing a color grading over everything for you. I also like to put a bit of this faded film here. It doesn't have to be too much. And there we go. Look at that. It does look already pretty decent, doesn't it? Now I have one more little trick for you. What if I have a very bright source of light in my background? So I imported another image here as example, and I'm going to apply a bit of Gaussian blur to this as well, just to simulate a bit of a camera focus in here. And then I want to go here over my video layer and right click over here in this area and add a track on top of it. And I'm going to add another adjustment layer because you can tell here that I have my previous ones creating sort of glow uh, to blend the colors, but it's not enough. So I'm going to bring another adjustment layer here over the video, stretch it, and the process is very similar, but first we're going to apply a color correction, the metry here. We're going to go into the curves and we want to make this very dark. So we're going to click somewhere around here in the middle and drag it down like this until we only have the brightest source of light visible here. Okay, so then we can go up into the opacity and change the blend mode to screen and search for the Gaussian blur, apply it to the layer. And then I can close here my Lumetri, just minimize it and Make sure to check the repeat edges and then we can slide up the blurriness and create us this sort of glow effect. Now for some reason it has these sort of sharp edges. It doesn't look very good. There's a way to fix that. We can go into the opacity and lower this thing down quite a bit. 25, 20 is good. And then I'm just going to do another track on top of this layer. Alt click and drag up to create a copy of it. And then we can click on this adjustment layer and go into the Gaussian blur and just raise it up a bit more. 
you can do this as many times as you want. You just want to create a sort of gradient. So I'm going to go back into the first adjustment layer and lower the Gaussian blur down to 50. I'm going to add another track and create another copy. And so the first one can be 50. The second one can be like 80. And then the third one can be like 100 maybe. And then if I want to add another track, duplicate this once more and raise even more the blur. We can do this as many times as we want until it starts to look like a natural glow coming from that window over the person and just making it look almost realistic. <laughs> so yes, those were the tricks I had for you today on how to work around terrible green screen and make it look decent or even kind of good. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next video.